Hey there, folks. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today uh, as far as usual content for the channel. This is a, a nice little game called Hemsim Metro, and it takes place in Seoul, South Korea on Line 1, which effectively runs right through the heart of Seoul. Um, anyway, it's created by some developers called Jameen Interactive. It's $19.99 currently on Steam, uh, which is considered early access on PC, of course. I think they're planning to make it for consoles as well. Um, this company also made uh, a couple of mobile games, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Hemsim 1 and 2 or something like that. But anyway, this is their first foray into um, PC, if I'm not mistaken. And... I think they had a bit of history with Open Rails, the uh, the train simulation game, and they decided to kind of make their own game. Uh, so that's what we got here. It was made with the Unreal Engine, as far as I know. And uh, anyway, line one, I'm probably gonna axe murder these <laughs> these names of these places. I my deepest apologies as I try to pronounce them. Uh, line one goes from a place called Yongdyungon to Cheongyangni. And it's 18 kilometers, 16 stations, above and underground, and you get three multiple units. Uh, this line, I think, was built in about the mid-70s, and then from there, the, the place just fleshed out completely. So anyway, this is going to be kind of like a quick look, um, just to show the game off, and sort of a tutorial, because it's not, it's not the easiest game for a... A non-native uh, Korean linguist. Um, it was a bit daunting for me at first uh, trying to get into this game because of that. I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. For one, the tutorials are photos. Luckily, they are in English. They've updated this game several times uh, with things like that. So you'll want to pay attention to that. The other issue is the settings. You don't know what's what, really as far as the settings. Like, yes, it says English, but there's some things that simply are not in English. Uh, they're working on that as well, as far as I know. But anyway, you can do some key mapping as well, or you can see at least what your keys are here. But uh, we're just going to try and get on with it. Going to try and go over a few things in case, you know, maybe you're having trouble with the game or you want to check it out, but you're not too sure like I was. So we're just going to try and get into it here. First and foremost, uh, I'm going to go over some of the keys. So delete are your lights. It's your headlights. So we're going to turn those on. Your views are one inside the cab here. Two is the front of the train. You've still got the HUD. It's just you don't see the, the console, the dash, if you will. Three is exterior. So you can move around with your mouse. If you hit three again, it kind of locks the photo, or photo, sorry, the camera in place. And when the train passes by, it'll kind of follow it. Um, if you're familiar with the four key and train simulators, sort of like that. And five gets rid of the HUD. So that's pretty much it, as far as I currently know. We'll go over a bit of the cab. This is the This is the second model, I think, between I think this is it. This is one of the newer ones anyway. You'll be able to tell once you look at them. Um, <clears throat> anyway, a couple of things you'll need to note. This as far as a train, metro sim, whatever, this is probably the most simmiest sim of that category that I've come across personally. Uh, it It's pretty hardcore. No collectibles. You can't get out and walk around. You know, things like that. It's, it's just got a timetable, essentially, and the menu, and that's it. You know, there's no telling what they'll come out with soon. But if you just want to drive a metro, subway, whatever... Uh, this is it. There's been a couple of games that have tried to do this and, and not done too well. Um, but anyway, so you're going to have to hold the DSD down the whole time. That is your space bar. It's that lever right there. So you're going to hold that down to be able to move anything. Your up and down is going to move the reverser like so. So we're going to go ahead and throw it in the forwards. Uh, you're, you'll see your brake handle over here. That's going to be comma and period. So commas release, period is apply. It's got seven notches plus emergency brake, which is the eighth notch. Um, 
And we are currently underground right now, but what we're about to do is head out into daylight, and there's a neutral section up here, which I had a bit of trouble with as well, so we're going to try and go over that so we can kind of, you know, help again assist if anyone's having any questions about this game. May not understand it. Um, hopefully this is somewhat helpful. So we're in gear. Uh, I'm going to release the brakes in a second. This right up here to your right is your stop board, essentially. This is where the cameras would be. This green on the uh, the bit above the two TV screens there denotes your doors being closed. Green means you're good to go. If that's red, I think it's red. If it's red, your doors are open. Now, this entire service and these trains are controlled by... It's either automatic or a guard, I think, because you do nothing. Essentially, when, when they open the doors, your cab is shut off. You can do nothing, and it's safety measures. You know, just like the whole the whole bit with this all being glassed in. This is uh, essentially for safety measures. And I think the whole Seoul uh, Korean Metro is like that as well, even the uh, above-ground parts. So anyway, let's hop back in here. So that's what that means over there. The other board that we're looking dead at now, that shows you where you need to stop at these stations, right? So zero and green, that is perfect. That means it lines perfectly up with the doors here, as you can see. No wiggle room, really. I mean, there there is a little bit, um, but it's like millimeters. I'm not sure what, what these numbers stand for, but it's very minor. Uh, but you'll see once I fail, you know, pulling up to the next station, which I guarantee will happen. Your signals over here are essentially like every other train signal for the most part. Blue is your green. Uh, there's yellows. There's reds. Anyway, blue means you're good. You're good to go. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take off here. But I'm not going to go too quick because we've got a neutral section up here. So I'm going to go over that as well. So there goes the brakes. We're going to give it one notch. So again, A and Z is your throttle. You'll see down here that you got power on, essentially, when you do. Got your amperage voltage meter, kilometers per hour. And what's neat about these needles is they kind of bobble around. You know, they're not completely static. They move. Uh, this, this is actually really nicely done in here, this cab. Uh, I have no clue what any of that means. Sometimes you can actually see the distance to the platform you're coming up to. It shows your due arrival time, all that good stuff, the, the length of your train. It shows you how much power you're currently pulling. So we're hovering around 1,500 uh, volts. So here we go. We are pulling outside. Now right up here, we should see a board. There you go. That red board with the two slashes, that is your warning that there's a neutral zone coming up. Now we're still on the metro line here. Those lines off to the right are high speed and intercity slash uh, just regular train services, right? So you'll see those going by. That's what's cool about this game is you'll see AI trains. You can't drive them, but they're there. All right, so there's the second board. That means it's now. So you're going to want to pull your throttle off, throw it in neutral. That ding dong is your alarm telling you you got a neutral section coming. So what you want to do, this thing down here called Elbcos, Hit the home key, turn that off. Hit the insert key, switch to AC power. Now hit the Elbcos key again. Throw it back forwards in gear. And then you'll see another sign coming up here. That sign right there, I believe, means the neutral section is over. And we should have power, let's see. There we go, we do. And as you can hear audibly, it's a different sound. Now that's your announcements telling you you're coming up to the next station. The blinking red box on the right hand side, that's telling you you've got a station stop coming up, so get ready to brake. AKA you need to be braking now, essentially. So that little red ring down there on the left, You've got to be under 10 kmh when you pass that. Ah, I told you I'd fail. Okay, so what we're going to do, we pass that, so the doors cannot open. So you got to be Johnny on the spot with this, right? So we're going to throw it in reverse. Uh, 
All right. Now, the alarm is going to start screaming at us because we're backing up and the brakes aren't on at a station stop. So that's completely fine when I'm at the helm. So it's still blinking, right? The little box over here is still blinking. We're going to back up, give it a little bit of juice. All right, there it goes. All right, so now we can pull back forwards. We're going to throw it back forwards. Brakes off. Give it a little notch. A little nudge of power. Brakes on. Okay. You hear the brake supply. You can effectively let go of everything, DSD, everything. You can see the cab is essentially shut down, except for your display over here. Now over here, you can see as well, you've got green, which means the doors on the left are shut. Uh, red, they're open. And you've got this display up here as well that tells you. And then you got a buzzer, which means you can go. The power will be reapplied in the cab. So let's make sure it's back and forwards. We got the DSD held. Brakes are coming off. Go ahead and give it a couple of notches, and we are off. Now, there are several things. This is basically just the kind of stuff to get you going hopefully there's a ton of stuff I don't fully understand like some signals uh, what what speed limits you need to be at things of that nature uh, there's there's kind of almost shunting moves you got to do oh look there goes a, a diesel powered passenger service but uh, it's a great little game it, it looks nice just to be a, a fledgling game made by a couple of uh, you know just a handful of devs it is a a nice game. And there we go. There's the announcement to the next station. Love that. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and give it three brake notches. Four. See if we can stop on time here. That's what this is all about. I'm going to break notch 6. A little too much, so I'm going to let off. Better to stop too soon than too late. We'll go ahead and let off all the way. We'll get to listen to the guy scream at us for a couple of seconds. He is not happy. Alright, one break notch. Alright, now the screen is on the left. A little bit more... There we go. Oh, almost perfect. And there we are. Cab is shut down. So we are just about... Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close to where you want to be. Here's the interior. It's not... Um, you know, it's not the best looking graphical fidelity wise, but it looks pretty good. And, and it's... It's fairly similar to the stuff in real life. Um, they could not, of course, get the labeling for legal reasons. Uh, HM Rail. It's obviously CoRail. That's that's the real um, company. Uh, the trains themselves look pretty good. They, you know, they all essentially look the same, but they are different models. Um, the the bare metal skin looks pretty good. It's got kind of that nice, like, non-polished finish to it. Uh, there are a couple of places lacking finer details, like these uh, AC units on the top here. Uh, something else I noticed during uh, one of the streams I did recently is the wheels do not move. They're they're just static. Uh, you don't really notice it, but if you're looking forward, it's the kind of stuff that you'll see. But uh, we'll go ahead and put the DSD down. Brakes are coming off. We'll head to the next stop here. Give it two notches to get moving. But these stations look great. They really do. The lighting, uh, the way the textures look, like uh, as far as the materials, you know, they're supposed to be here, like the platforms and whatnot, and the shininess of the uh, the metal parts. And then when you come out into sunlight like that, the transition is amazing, especially when you're going to or fro uh, underground. 
which uh, other train sim games, I won't name any names, have not been able to get to happen as well. Um, but it's it's a darn good looking little game. It really is. There's there's kind of a a blur, a slight blur, if you will. It's not too crazy. I don't think you can turn it off. Uh, there's no options in game. It's a nice uh, building over there. I don't know the name of that. Was it a possibly a pagoda? Gonna go over a bridge here in the river. But the line, I mean, the rails, the ballast, the catenary, it all looks great. It looks really nice. The sounds are fairly decent, you know. They're, uh, they're passable. I don't know what these things sound like in real life. I've, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos of uh, Line 1 in Seoul. But, uh, you know, they, they sound legit to me. Uh, they, don't, they don't sound canned. They don't sound copy-pasted from anything that I can think of. They, they sound good. They sound edited fine. Go ahead and throw the power off and look outside here as we're moving. See, as you can see, there's wheels, but they're not moving. And there's there's the uh, the blur going on. There's our next station. The camera is a bit finicky. I'm I'm not not in love with it. Uh, I'd like to be able to have a little bit more freedom. Oh, we might have blown this one. The uh, you know maybe like a free cam would be nice. Here comes another train inbound. Part of the metro. There we go. No, 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 no. A little bit more. There we go. And the doors are opening. So you'll pass from left to right. That will happen. You just got to be, you know, on guard. You got to be paying attention pretty much at all times. But uh, the camera's kind of funky. It'll zoom in and out like this. You'll end up in other trains. But it doesn't go too far. Like, you, you can't completely 360 degree around the train itself. You can pull forwards and backwards to get on the front and the back of the train. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. We'll do a uh, we'll do an exterior exit here. Where the heck is our train? See, I'm I'm losing the camera here. Okay, this is our train. I thought we were the other train. <laughs> All right, here we go. DSD is down. Brakes are coming off. Let's go ahead and give it two notches, and we're off. But the buildings, man, the buildings back there, those look good. The uh, the foliage look good. The track itself looks good. Uh, the sleepers and the rails. The ballast ballast looks pretty good as well. It's almost got a 3D effect to it. Um, but there's just something about the lighting in this game. Like, it's it's very bright, but it doesn't look too washed out or too bloomy. I, uh, I actually like it compared to, you know, some other train simulators uh, and their default lighting. So they got that right. Listen to the sounds a bit here as we roll. Even listen to the clatter over the joints. These are these are decent sounds. Look down there at the HUD as well. The uh, kilovolt needle bobbling around. Kilometer does it as well. Cut the power off. Just cruise here. I believe this is the next station. There's your regenerative braking. Come off the brakes, you can hear the air there. So I have not yet figured out the precise, you know, brake style coming into these stations because they're all different. From what I can gather, different lengths, uh, you know, curves, things like that. 
but uh, effectively when the front of the train starts crossing the beginning of the platform you probably want to be in at least maybe notch three of braking oh pretty close again but uh, it's it's different scenery all throughout like these walls over here safety security and sound walls I mean, it's it's just a really great looking little game, and I cannot wait to see what else they do with this. They they seem to be on top of it as far as updates. There have been several in the last uh, you know month or couple of weeks, for that matter. Um, it's got quite a bit of traffic. There there are different um, scenarios or, or timetables and different times of the day and different parts of the route. Um, but you'll see quite a bit of AI. Like I mentioned, uh, you'll see the high-speed trains, which look really cool. And then you'll see the diesel intercity trains. There's also, like, uh, an electric um, loco-hauled intercity slash regional passenger train. You'll see those as well, and they look decent, you know. You can't drive them, um, but they still look pretty good. got this place on the right over here. Someone told me it may be a driving range for golf. Next station here. So let's see. That's notch 3 braking. Let's see if we can get this down before the end of the run here. Seems a little bit too less. So we'll do 5. Back to 3. Yeah, I'm really bad at this. Not even trying to fake it <laughs> this it takes some getting used to they're they're quick the physics feel different um you know they, they feel pretty good compared to most train sims and, and other metro sims i'll show you in the menu what they added here recently as well there we go all right doors are open so we've got this there's a physics effect. Now, by default, it's right smack dab in the middle. So, I'll leave it there. I'll show you what uh, I'll show you what it looks like here. But there's all kinds of stuff. It's um, there's a lot going on. Like it's a basic game, but at the same time, it's not. It's it's a bit hard to describe. Like on your speed gauge here, the little circles, uh, you've got zero, fifteen. Uh, what 25 and 40 and when you see uh, restricting signals these little dials within the dial will light up the appropriate uh, speed and you will need to match that speed an alarm will go off uh, an old you know kind of ringing sound from kind of like a, a bud EMU from the states uh, and you'll have to hit that speed or it'll just keep going and if you don't hit I think break notch 3 uh, within a couple of seconds or something like that, it will shut the train down and you'll have to reset it. But I'll, I'll go over here what, uh, what you can do to reset the train if something happens. So, for example, I'll let go of the DSD here in just a moment. And you'll see it'll kill the train. So we'll go ahead and do it right here when we get outside. There we go. He's yelling at us. He's like, press that DSD, yo. There it goes. E brake. All right, so we're going to go ahead and press the DSD. We're going to fully ap apply brakes here. We're going to release the throttle. Put it neutral, throw it back forwards, release the brakes, and there you go. You see the needle over there, you're good to go. Give it some juice, and we're rolling. So you can kind of see with the physics, it's almost got like this weird jerking effect. But uh, I believe this is an issue with Unreal games because, uh, like Train Sim World 2, for example, and Train Sim World 1, for that matter, the trains did the same thing. They kind of, you know, 
shimmy side to side, if you will. It's, it's a weird thing that I guess happens with this engine. But uh, we'll go ahead and throw it up to maximum physics effect. And I believe we've got a yellow up here, so let's see what happens here. Yes, we do. So that's a yellow. I have no clue what happened. I think I might have let go of the DSD. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so brakes maxed out. I'm going to pull the throttle off, throw it neutral, back forwards. Brakes all the way off. There we go. Now look that we got physics maxed out, how it's like jittering around quite a bit more now. It's kind of weird. If I'm honest. Alright, so there's our yellow again. Now, it's not screaming at us because we were already under 45 kilometers per hour. That single yellow. I believe when you see a double yellow, it'll, uh, it'll start screaming at you in 25 kilometers per hour. And again, with that, is is you're gonna want to you're gonna want to brake as soon as possible when you go uh, past the signal. Otherwise, it'll shut you down. It's almost like acknowledging it, sort of like PZB with uh, German trains to a degree. Right, we're gonna scoot up a little bit more here. Ah, we went too far. Alright, throw it in reverse, brakes off, push back a hair. There we go, that'll do. But even look at this bridge up here and the supports and like you can see the rivets under the uh, the steel going along. It's got street lights up there. I mean, it's, it's a good looking little game, it really is. I'm uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with this game. I I hope it gets much larger. So that's it. That's your scenario, guys. So we'll see uh we'll see what it looks like. This is your menu. When you load into the game, this is it. There's no fanfare, there's no frills, there's no, you know, do this and unlock a a pretty picture for your computer screen. You know, it's none of that. It's it's, it's literally a simulator in the most detailed manner compared to a lot of other train sims out there and metro sims if you will so we'll do this one here this uh let's see this is underground this is the old boy we'll do the old boy here we got four stations this is all underground so this all through here is pretty much underground and this is above ground so i'll try and do a legit run here we'll uh we'll see how far we get I'm going to go ahead and turn the physics effect back to where they were. Love that music. Alright, so let's go ahead and get set up. Delete. Get our lights on. DSD. Spacebar. Up arrow. Forwards. Thank you. The doors are sh will shut in just a moment, and we'll regain uh, control up here. There they go. You can hear the brakes. There's the guard buzzer. All right. Brakes are coming off. Let's scooch. The tunnels look great as well. Uh, something else I'd like to point out is, you know, you've got games like Train Sim World 2 with uh, a couple of underground sections. Uh, notably the Baker Lou line, and it is either so pitch black that you just cannot see a thing, uh, you know, even with lights, but this looks phenomenal. This looks really, really good to me. 
So it just it goes to show what can be done with the Unreal Engine, which uh, you know developers like Dovetail use for Train Some World Two. Because this is a great looking little game. Blue signal right there. All right, so we've got the blinker. It's in a different spot. We're gonna go ahead and throw it in three breaking notches. It's the platform on the left. Break two, break one. Like to have it at least in one so I don't have to listen to that guy yelling at me incessantly. Let's see if we can get the money here. This one's way, way up on the left, the screen here. So you've always got to pay attention. I mean, you've got that to deal with. you got to see where you're at. And then you've got... You see this little line right under the front of the train, right beneath the coupler. That's just like the red illuminated uh, circle above ground. You've got to be under 10 kmh by the time you hit that thing. So you've got that to contest with as well. But anyway, this is the original multiple unit here. You can tell it's a lot older. But I think it's cool. I like the older stuff. And it, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say it's got character. But, uh, let's see. We'll take off, go to our next station here. Give it a couple of notches right off the bat. So it shows your speed, shows your notch, shows the arrival time of the next station. Uh, it shows your train number over here. We're K677. I like how it shows the uh, the voltage as well. That's cool, and how it's not just a a solid number. You know, it it kind of jumps back and forth. Blue signal. We're still good to go. Next station announcement. As soon as we see the platform, I'm going to start breaking. And each station is different. And they look great. You know, they're, they're colorful, bright. They got a ton of glass. The next train, the one coming past there, how you saw the rays of light going in between the pillars, that looks amazing. Really good looking. The one thing, my one biggest gripe, and, and this is a reach, because I really do enjoy this little simulator very so much, is the fact that you'll notice there are no passengers, there's no people, there's no AI folks milling about getting on or off the train uh shnikes we went too far all right so again gonna put it in reverse brakes coming off we're just gonna put one notch on it and back up here and then cut it back off there we go brakes on make sure when you do that unlike me the first couple of times is put it back forwards first thing but yeah, you'll notice there's no people. That uh, It's a bit of a shame. It would just make it look a bit more lifelike. People milling about, you know, going about their day, getting off and on trains. But uh, it's, it really is good looking. Like the signs, you've got the signs here on both sides. You've got the wires uh, above. You've got the, uh, the actual DC electrification is that rail above there. So it's not on the ground. Then you've got all this stuff out here in the ballast the uh, signal junction box and all that and those safety poles like that just looks really good you can kind of see the ballast there it's almost got like a 3d effect to it all right let's go ahead and DSD and give it a couple of notches and take off but the way the light just drapes down the side of these concrete walls it really does look good
next station. Gonna put it notch four. Light is flashing, station approaching. We'll give it two notches a break. Three, four, five. The doors are on your left. You can transfer to the line number six. I'd like to point out as well the headlights. That's something else uh, in some other train sims. You know, not not to name names and point fingers, but uh, headlights are not ever done that well. These look good. They, it, you know, they they apply ample lighting, but it's not overly bright. They're not, you know, it's not completely washing out everything. I just completely passed that one too on my little uh, rant there. All right, let's back up some. Went way past that son of a gun. There we go. But yeah, the lights look great. I mean, look, they're off. It's dark. They're on. It's bright. It doesn't wash the rest of the map out. It's just... Uh, I can't get over it. It's a good-looking game. It's like the tenth time I've said it, I know. But it uh, it really is. And uh, I'm enjoying it. I've gone through probably about half um, of these scenarios here, which I'll show you, which... You know, go through different parts of the line. So this is the line that you get right now. And there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. So fifteen services essentially, but that's it. You know, it's bare bones, but it's a simulator. It's, I don't. It's not trying to be something else. You know, it's not like a a dope. You know. Fortnite crossover with a train sim type thing, you know what I mean? It's 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 a metro sim, and that's what it aims to do. But I hope they do so much more with this game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was somewhat informative if you're looking to get this or trying to understand it a bit more. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, I'd like to note anything. If I missed anything you may know about, please do let me know down in the comments below. But uh, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.